and welcome to chapter six. We're looking at trigonometry now. We're going to be starting here with trig ratios in any angle and standard position. This is something we did last year. We started going through. We learned about standard position. We're now going to be applying that. We're also going to be looking further than degrees. So we're going to start with degrees, 360 degrees in a circle. We're going to take that further. Give it a little bit of background. Why 360 degrees? Seems like a very odd number. 100 would have been a heck of a lot better, or even 300 for that matter. Let's look at why. So the first thing is to identify why we would say that 100 degrees in a circle would make a lot more sense to us. That's because we have a base 10 number system now. And we've gone with base 10, we have 10 fingers, easy to count. But that's not where all this originated. We look back at the old ancient Babylonians and uh, Sumerians. What they did is they had a base 60 number system. And so because of that, they also noticed, hey, the year is 12 months of 30 days, which gives us 360 days in a year. So that's how long it takes, all well, that time, the Earth to go around the sun. And they believed that the sun was the one traveling, so they would say, well, the sun takes 360 days. And then they started applying that also to circles. What they did is they took a hexagon, and that's where they based it out of. And they said, oh, hey, we have six triangles, and it all originated from that. As well, they used 60 all the way along for 60 base number system. It has a lot of factors. And that actually plays to our advantage here as we go along. This then transfers into our everyday life, 60 minutes, 60 seconds, all that kind of stuff. So before we can get into our chapter 6, we need to take a step back. We need to look back at our unit circle. So you'll want to go through this process again of redeveloping it, just like we did last year. First of all, we've got to start with our special triangles. There are two special triangles. The first one is going to be our 30... 60, 90 degree triangle. The way that this is made is with an equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangle has all the sides the same length. Hey, let's just take it for the fun of it. Let's call them two, a length of two. We also know that in every equilateral triangle, the angles are equal. There's 360 degrees inside of a triangle. That means every one of them has to be 60 degrees inside there. But we want to do some trigonometry. We got to take it, chop her in half, and make a right angle. We can't do our trigonometry without the right angle triangle. So we chop this baby in half and pull out that part right here. We'll take that one, bring it out, and it gives us now a new triangle. That triangle, 90 degrees here, let's put in what we know. We know that this side length is 2. We also know that we chopped this one in half. So if it was too long, it's now 1. I need to know that third side. Let's put in our angles. This is 60. We chopped her in half, so that has to be 30. Also, the 30, 60, and 90 have to add up to 180. So I need to know what's that third side. A squared equals... C squared minus B squared. So A squared equals 2 squared minus 1 squared equals 4 minus 1. A squared is 3, so that means A is root 3. Throw that baby in there, and that's something, our first special triangle. We're going to transfer that now into our unit circle. A unit circle is a circle that has a radius of 1. Hence the name unit circle. So I'm going to take this special triangle a touch further. 
Looks like a happy face. That's an arrow. I need to have a triangle inside of a circle. So we're taking a unit circle. We're going to draw it there. Oh, perfect. Look at that. Nice. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a triangle in here. Actually, I'm going to slightly change that. I'm going to put the triangle a little bit higher up there. Sorry. And I'm going to say this is 60 degrees, 30 degrees. And I want to label my sides. But I want to have a radius of this circle to be 1. So I'm going to take my special triangle, because that's a 30 and 60 and 90, so that must be the same special triangle as this one. And I'm going to take this too and change it into 1. The way that I can take 2 and scale it down to 1 is by dividing all of the side lengths by 2. I'm going to take half the size of the triangle. So that makes this side 1, this side 1 half, and this side root 3 over 2. It's still 60, 30, 90. Let's bring that baby back in. Let's label our side lengths. So that made this side 1 half and made this side root 3 over 2. If that's the side lengths, I can say this is my x value and this is my y value of this coordinate point right here. So 60 degree triangle, I got a point of 1 half comma root 3 over 2 because that's the x x and my y value now let's flip that triangle we started with a triangle that was 1 1 half root 3 over 2 and that was 60 and 30 I'm gonna flip this triangle and I want to talk about instead of 60 down here I'm gonna flip it and get the 30 down there. Boom, boom. Flipped it up, 30 goes here, 60 there. The hypotenuse is still a hypotenuse, that's one. But now, my two legs, next to the 30 is the root 3. So next to the 30 is the root 3 over 2. And that makes this one half. I'm going to take this one and throw it on. That means now I've got this triangle down here, a radius of one of this circle. That's 30 degrees in here. My x value is root 3 over 2. My y value is 1 half. I now get the coordinate point to go with this one as x, root 3 over 2, and the y, 1 half. Bringing those two together, I've got it 60 degrees, 1 half, comma, root 3 over 2. At 30 degrees, I've got root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. Now we need a spot that's going to go right in this middle, and that brings in our next special triangle. So the next one is 45, 45, 90. In this one, we don't start with an equilateral triangle. We're going to start with a 45, 45, 90 triangle, which I've got two angles that are the same. Ooh, there's a property going on here. That's called an isosceles triangle. Two equal angles gives us two equal sides. Let's, for the fun of it, just call those one. Let's find the third side. Same way. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. C squared equals 1 squared plus 1 squared. C squared equals 1 plus 1. C squared equals 2. That means our hypotenuse is the square root of 2. But the same thing. I want to bring that back onto that unit circle. Radius of 1. The hypotenuse is always the radius. So let's take it down. And change that up. In order to get a radius of 1, 
I need to take all of them and divide it by root 2. Which gives us 1 for the radius, 1 over root 2, and 1 over root 2. 45 and 45. I'm going to do one last thing just because I can. Sometimes you'll see it this way, sometimes not. This is one of them that you're going to need to know for the unit circle. Or another form that they use half of the time on your exam is taking it and rationalizing the denominators. Multiply by root 2 over root 2, which gives us root 2 over 2. You have to identify both. That 1 over root 2 is the same as root 2 over 2. And I'm going to use root 2 over 2 more often. And there is a reason for that, which I'm not going to explain right now, but I will in class. And let's throw this one now onto the unit circle the same way. So now at the 45 degree angle there, we've got an x value and a y value. The x value is going to be root 2 over 2. The y value is also going to be root 2 over 2. Or if you want, you can use 1 over root 2. That's the same. So there's our quadrant 1 of the unit circle. We now transfer that into the other four quadrants just by taking the same three points and extending it. This one is going to slide over to here. Except we're now going negative x and a positive y. So our negative x, negative 1 half, and our positive y, root 3 over 2. It's going to be the same size of a triangle, so it's the same numbers, just different positives and negatives. The 45 slides straight over. That one's also related. But in this case, again, the x is negative, the y is positive in this quadrant. So we've got negative root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. Same thing with the 30 degree angle. Those are going to be the same, except negative x value. We need the angles to go along with this now. This first one was 30 degrees inside the triangle. We've got the exact same triangle over here, with 30 degrees inside of it. So now we know that it's 180 degrees all the way around half that circle. Well, if that's 180 and this is 30, that means we've got to have 180 minus 30, 150 degrees at that point. The same thing's going to apply to this one. It's 45 inside, so we've got 180 minus 45, which is going to give us 135. Do the exact same thing into the 60 angle. 60 degrees inside there, so 180 minus the 60 is going to give us 120 degrees. Extending into the other two quadrants, falling the same. Okay. We would go 180 plus 30, and it's going to be the exact same points, except that I'll be negative root 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. That's 180 plus 30, 210 degrees. We would do the same thing with the 45s and the 60s. We'd also go into the fourth quadrant. We've got 180, 360 degrees. So we're back here now to 360 degrees on this point. And for each one of those parts of the unit circle, we've got this point as well, which is again 
related to the 30. So it's going to be root 3 over 2. But we're still going down in the y, so negative 1 half. Positive x value and negative y value. And we've got 360 minus 30, which gives us 330 degrees. For the other ones, we would get the full unit circle. So there you've got the unit circle okay, to finish off the other two quadrants. And now we can just use that to work through. Because the, the hypotenuse is 1, when we look at the cosine, we take any one of these points. Let's look at cosine of 30 degrees. Cos is adjacent over the hypotenuse. Well, the adjacent is our x value over the hypotenuse, which is our r, the radius of the circle. But we made this a unit circle. That means the radius is always 1. So our cosine is x over 1, which is just x. The cosine is the x-coordinate of the unit circle. That's the power of it, right there. Sine, following the same thing, would be the opposite over the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is 1. It's y over the r, which is our radius, y over 1. So we've got the sine being our y-coordinate. So we could jump straight into there and say, okay, what's the sine of 135? We find 135 on our unit circle, and we are looking at sine. That's the y-coordinate, which is 1 over root 2. Done. That's all we have to do. We can pick those off real quick from the unit circle. Best way to remember it, cos comes before sine, alphabetical order, C before S. That means X before Y, cos, comma, sine, X, comma, Y, alphabetical order. Cos of 240, find 240 on your unit circle. If we're looking at cosine, we're looking at the x-coordinate, negative 1 half. There. Cos of 240 is negative 1 half. Done deal. It's the exact form. Whenever you're asked for exact value, that means we're looking for a unit circle value. Tangent can also be found. We're looking at 330. Go find 330, and we're going to take the tan. When we're doing tangent, it's always y over x. Rise over run. Your tangent is the slope. That's really what it's talking about. And we take our y value over the x value. Oh, let me change the color on that one. So we go to 330. The y value is negative 1 half the x value, root 3 over 2. Dividing the two of them. They always have the same denominator. So we don't even need to worry about that. We're talking about tan, only with tan. Yes, for a sine and cosine. And we can just from there divide the numerators. y divided by the x. 1, negative 1, sorry, over root 3. Which gives us our value of negative 1 over root 3. Let's try these three out. You've got your unit circle sitting in front of you. Let's work through. So sine of 300. Find 300. Right here. The sine. Sine is y value. So we're just going to look at the y value. So it's negative root 3 over 2. Done. Let's do the cosine of 150 next. Cos of 150, find your 150 spot. Go with the cosine. 
That's the x coordinate, alphabetical order. So the cosine of 150 is negative root 3 over 2 as well. Tangent. A little bit more. All we got to do is find 225. There it is. And tangent is y over x. So we've got our y value over our x value. Our y, and we only have to look at the numerators. The denominators will always cancel off. So we've got negative 1 negative 1 over negative 1, which is 1. So the tan of 225 is 1. And you can punch those into your calculator and confirm that they come to the same decimal answer. Sine of 300 and root negative root 3 over 2, same decimal. That gives you the background knowledge to be able to start this trig section. I'm going to end the video here. Call this part A and then I'll start into the regular lesson in part B.